Hello and welcome. My name is Kevin Ashton. I'm a chef and food writer and today we're going to show you how to improve your barbecuing skills. This program I call the art of cooking on a barbecue. We're going to cover everything you need to know to improve your barbecue skills. How to set up your barbecue, the equipment you need and we're even going to show you how to make your barbecue weatherproof. We're also going to include some delicious easy to do recipes. So let's get started. Now to understand how to master using a barbecue, you need to learn how to control the heat. Now there are two methods of cooking on a barbecue. The one is called direct heat. When you're directly grilling your meat or fish or vegetables on the barbecue. And the other method is called indirect. When you're setting up your barbecue to use it as an indirect method, then this is for roasting things. And we'll show you how to use both methods today. Now this, how I have the barbecue set up now, is what we call the indirect method. So as you can see, we have charcoal on both sides, both ends of this barbecue. And in the middle, we have a tray. Now this is just an old roasting tray that I've covered with tin foil. And the purpose of the tin foil tray is to act as a drip tray. So if I put a piece of pork or a whole chicken or even a shoulder of lamb in the center of my barbecue and then close the lid down, then I create an oven. So if I close my lid down, I've created an oven. And so as the meat cooks, instead of it causing any flare up, the juices as they come out of the meat will go into the tray below. And that's how you can roast on a barbecue. Now you can see that we've totally reset the barbecue. This is now for the direct method of grilling. This is how you have your, your charcoal set up if you want to just grill on your barbecue rather than roast. So down the far end you can see that I've got a lot of charcoal. In the middle I have less charcoal and in the end closest to the camera I have no charcoal. So the reason for this is this is your high heat zone this is your medium heat zone and the area where there's no charcoal whatsoever, that is your low heat zone. And the reason you're doing that is so if your food is getting too brown before it's cooked, you can move it into the low heat zone so that it cooks and browns evenly and doesn't get burnt. Now the same principle can be applied to a gas barbecue. If you have a gas barbecue and it has three burners on it, then you'd have the one burner set to high, the middle burner set to medium, and then the third burner left off to give you the cool zone, where you can just keep things ticking over and move them to that cool zone if they're getting too brown too quickly. If you can understand this and master this, this is how you control the heat on a barbecue. Now if you have a charcoal barbecue, and you go down to the supermarket to buy some charcoal for your barbecue, then you probably want to know all well, which charcoal is best for me. There are basically two kinds of charcoal you can buy. You can buy lumpwood charcoal, or you can buy briquettes. Now they both have advantages and disadvantages. The lumpwood charcoal catches fire easier and burns fast and it doesn't have any kind of nasty chemical things in it. The, the briquette is compressed, so it burns much slower, and it, therefore it takes a little more effort to get it burning, but it burns slower and longer. So what I like to do is use a 50-50 mix of the briquettes and the lumpwood charcoal. And while we're talking about different things you can use on your barbecue, Perhaps you'd thought or heard about people talking about wood chips and wondered how do you use wood chips on a barbecue. Well, what you need to do, these are hickory wood chips and you can buy various kinds, but hickory is perhaps the most popular type of wood chip you can get. You need to soak the hickory wood chips in cold water the night before so they really soak up a lot of water. 
and then when you've got your barbecue alight and ready to grill then you can throw some of these wood wet wood chips on top of your coals which will cause smoke and steam to come out rather than immediately catch fire and that will give you an additional smoky flavor in your food. Now you can use wood chips even on a gas barbecue by the same principle of getting them wet the night before and then just putting a few on top of the grill bars uh, and perhaps you might need to close the lid down and that way you can get a smoky flavor into your food even if you're using a gas barbecue. Now some people like to use a gas barbecue because it is easier to clean up, easier to light, uh, none of the mess and some people are more traditional and they like to use a charcoal barbecue uh, which will give you more natural flavor but it is more of a cleanup. I'll leave that decision to you but the thing about uh, a gas barbecue and both uh, uh, a charcoal barbecue is you really need to take care of the barbecue post barbecue after you've had your barbecue. Try to find a place to store it so it's not in the rain so it won't go rusty. Try to cover it if you can to help it against the elements in the months that you're not using your barbecue and clean it before you put it away. Particularly if you have a charcoal barbecue, you need to make sure that the coals are completely cold before you start shoveling those coals into a plastic bin, for instance. Because the coals can stay uh, hot for maybe 24 hours after you've finished your barbecue. So just move it out of the way and then sort it out in a day and give it a good scrub off with a wire brush to make it as clean as you can uh, before you put it away to store. The other thing you'll see me wearing is latex gloves. Now these are really, really handy for lots of different reasons on a barbecue. For instance, I've been handling the charcoal and now I can take them off and my hands are clean before I handle food. Now also, uh, they are really, really good in regards to if I'm touching raw something and then going on to touch something that's cooked, I can just take my gloves off, maybe spritz my hands with anti-back cleaner just for absolute 100% certainty that my hands are then clean to go and touch food with. So having one or two pairs of latex gloves are really essential in the makeup of what makes a great barbecue. Whenever you have a barbecue, if you're inviting more than nine guests, then the chances are that you're going to have some vegetarians amongst them. So rather than just give them a stick with a few vegetables stuck on it, let's create something they'll really enjoy. This particular dish I call grilled warm Mediterranean vegetable salad. To the right hand side of my cutting board, you can see I've got large flat mushrooms. And on the cutting board, I've got a red pepper, a yellow pepper, an aubergine, two courgettes, two vine ripe tomatoes, a whole head of garlic, and some fresh mozzarella. Behind that, I have uh, some basil, fresh basil, some balsamic vinegar, and some really delicious extra virgin olive oil that was sent to me from a gentleman that produces olive oil on the island of Cyprus and we're going to be trying that olive oil out. He's won a lot of awards and we're hoping to go and visit his olive farm next year in Cyprus. As you can see I've already cut the red pepper into four and let me show you how we did that. I've just moved the red pepper out of the way off the board. It's very very simple. Just cut the pepper from the top in half and then cut each half again in half so you end up with four quarters and then we're just going to take the stalk and the seeds off the pepper I'll repeat that you just cut along the line there going from the bottom to the top and we'll do it twice more and then we've got the yellow pepper and the red pepper prepared now the reason I don't cut the pepper up any more than this and I want to keep all of the vegetables nice and large is so then it's easy to move it around on the grill and it won't fall between the grill bars and end up sitting on top of the charcoal. 
So we've got the red and the yellow pepper cut up. I'm going to put it into a plastic container and then I'm going to move that out of the way. And the next thing we're going to cut up are the mushrooms. Now in my recipe I usually call for two large flat mushrooms. These are a little small so I'm going to use three instead of two. All I'm going to do in this case is I'm just going to peel the outside skin off the mushrooms. Really, really simple. And then we're going to take the stalks out. I'm going to take a small paring knife and we're just going to trim the, the stalk just a little bit. Just like that. Before I put that on the grill, I'm going to drizzle some olive oil and put some chopped garlic on that side of the mushrooms so it'll act as a cup and keep all that olive oil and garlic flavour soaking into the mushroom as it cooks on the grill. So next we have our two vine ripe tomatoes. I've taken the stalks out and we're just going to cut them very simply again into four. So I'm going to cut from the top and then I'm going to cut them in half so you've just kept them into quarters and we'll do the same with the other tomato and that's all the preparation that they need and then they will be oiled with olive oil and salt and pepper before they go onto the grill. Next I'm going to show you how we're going to prepare the, the courgettes. They're sort of medium sized courgettes, you don't want them too small, you don't want them too large. So first I'm going to cut the ends off and then I'm going to move one out of the way and I'm going to cut it lengthwise. Just hold it while you're cutting it to make sure it's not moving around. So you've got two halves. Move your rubbish out of the way for the moment. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut again, cut these into quarters. So I've got the courgette now into quarters. And now we're going to take a sharp knife and we're going to run it along just where the seeds are. Okay, I'll show you that again. We're just cutting out the seeds and the reason we're doing this is because often it's the seeds that can make the flavour of either aubergines or courgettes a little bitter. And if I cut the seeds out then it won't be bitter. Not only that, it'll sit on the grill a lot easier because it sits flat that side and it sits flat that side. So one more time, just take those seeds off, move those to my plastic container. So I've just got to remove the seeds on this second courgette as I did with the first one. Now the whole point of keeping the vegetables nice and large in size, the peppers, the courgettes, the aubergines, the mushrooms, the tomatoes, is because it's you don't want to have lots of small pieces that are going to burn quickly on your grill. You want nice big pieces that you can easily turn on the grill and then once everything is cooked then you can put it back on your board, cut it up into bite-sized pieces and mix it into you to create your salad. Whenever you making a barbecue you've got to be thinking well there may be some guests coming along that are vegetarians and if you're going to make some vegetarian food for your vegetarians you really need to cook that first on your barbecue before anything else so you can put your hand on your heart and say yes this was cooked before it got anywhere near any meat so today we're going to do what I call a warm Mediterranean grilled salad and previously I have prepared some mushrooms, some uh, courgettes and tomatoes, vine ripe tomatoes and we're going to add another couple of ingredients to that. I've got a, an aubergine so we're going to slice the aubergine up and we want the aubergine slices fairly thick because we don't want them to get stuck on the grill. Now the idea of my salad is that you cook 
the individual vegetables in a large size and then when you have everything cooked then you cut it up and put it into your serving bowl. So on this, in this dish I have red and yellow peppers and we've put some olive oil on it and we've also put some salt and pepper and we're going to move this and put this on the grill and we're also going to take two red onion halves and we're just going to keep the onions in half. These will take quite a long time to cook because they're quite thick. If I cut them up smaller the onions may fall between the grill bars and we don't want to do that. We just need to be make sure that we put these on the lowest part of the grill to get the lowest amount of heat to cook them slowly. I will add a little bit of olive oil to that and we're going to put the onions on first because they will take the longest to cook and I've got them on remember where we have the lowest part of the heat and then the peppers we're going to put on the medium side of the heat and you see that I've started them skin side down Now we're also going to add some garlic to our grilled Mediterranean salad and how we do that is I've just taken a whole head of garlic, I've cut it in half and then I've put some drizzled some extra virgin olive oil on it and we're going to add a little bit of salt and pepper to season it and then we're going to place it on the grill. Again we don't want the garlic to burn so we're going to put it on the where the heat is the lowest to start off with. And we're also going to take this little few pieces of garlic and we're going to take the skins off the garlic and we're going to chop this garlic up so we don't waste anything and we're going to use these pieces of garlic to help flavour the mushrooms. So we're just going to chop them up and we will remove the skins, get the skins back out of the way. So earlier on we prepared our three flat mushrooms so we're now going to put some olive oil to use them as a container to keep that olive oil in the mushrooms and then we're just going to use some of the garlic and sprinkle some of the garlic into your mushrooms and we're going to start the mushrooms off like this and we're going to put the mushrooms on the middle of the grill. So you need to keep an eye on these vegetables because they really don't take that long. These have taken about four minutes I would say from the time I put them on the grill. Just keep turning them because you don't want them too charred. You want a little bit of char on the peppers but not too much. Right, so now we're going to take the peppers, start taking the peppers off. And remember, you want them about three quarters cooked. And the, they'll carry on cooking a little bit more once you've taken them off the grill. So you need to keep moving things around, turn your onions. And you see that I've turned the garlic. So just keep turning that over, move the mushrooms around. See as the mushrooms cook, you get some water out of the mushrooms, it adds to the olive oil, so they're not dry. Right, the next thing we're going to put on the grill is we have some courgettes and tomatoes. Now you saw me cut the courgettes up when I did the preparation beforehand and how I took the seeds out and now I've just rubbed it with some olive oil, salt and pepper and it's ready to go onto the grill. So we'll start the courgettes again on the medium side of the grill. And the tomatoes we will start on the high side of the grill because we want to get the tomatoes browned a little bit fast and then we're going to move it to the cooler side of the grill. 
and you really need to use vine ripe tomatoes and all those juices from the tomatoes they can go into the bowl with the salad. So now the tomatoes that have been on the hot side of the grill have gotten a little brown I want to move them over to the cool side of the grill. They won't take much longer to cook now, they're almost cooked. And you can see the same with the courgette that we had in the middle. Once you've got a little char mark on them, we're going to take them off and I'm going to put them into my bowl with the other ingredients and then we're going to cut them up into bite-sized pieces. Now you see how much easier it is to control the vegetables in large pieces than it is if the vegetables are in small little pieces that you've cut and it falls down between the grills. We're going to put the tomatoes off now. And turn the onions again very carefully so it doesn't fall between. Sometimes they come apart. So keep those onions there. Turn the garlic again for patience. And now we're going to put the aubergines on. Okay, so now you can see that I've put the aubergines on to the hot end of the grill. I've just drizzled the aubergine slices with a little bit of olive oil. I haven't drowned them in olive oil. And I've put some salt and pepper on there as well. But we want to cook these quite quickly. And they really don't take very long. And at the same time we need to keep an eye on our garlic and our onion is just about done so I'm going to take the onion off and place that on the board ready to cut up. So here we have our bowl of grilled Mediterranean vegetables. We have our aubergines, our red and yellow peppers, our vine ripe tomatoes, our garlic grilled mushrooms, uh, we've got a red onion and we've got courgettes. And we're going to finish it now with a little bit more olive oil, but you need to use good quality olive oil for your dish. And then we're going to add a little bit more salt and pepper. And I'm going to move this salad over here and show you what we have here. We have the garlic that we've put on the grill and now that garlic is really quite soft. But you're going to have to let it cool down just a minute or two when it comes off the grill. You see how easy that comes out now. So I'm going to throw all the paper away and we'll do the same to the other half. all that nicely grilled garlic will add a lot of depth of flavour to our salad. So we're just going to cut it up it doesn't need to be too fine because the garlic is grilled so it's mild in flavour, it's not bitter because you've cooked the garlic and it's got a slight smoky flavour because you've cooked it on a grill. Right, that is sufficiently cooked and chopped. I'm going to just put that into the salad and then we've got another couple of little finishing touches. I have some basil leaves here. I'm just going to take the stalks off and then we're going to roll up the basil leaves and just thinly chiffonade those basil leaves and we're going to sprinkle the basil on top 
making sure it, we don't lose any of it. And here we have a ball of fresh mozzarella. So we're going to just tear that into little pieces and scatter that through our salad. Now, of course, if if my vegetarian guests are actually vegan, then I wouldn't put the cheese in. But if they're vegetarian, then this adds a lot of extra colour and a different dimension to your vegetarian dish. So we'll scatter that cheese around. I'm going to stir it gently, stir it over, so we get all those colours distributed, all that cheese, and the put the rest of the cheese in there. Okay, now I'm going to wipe my hands. And we're going to put a little bit of balsamic vinegar. So we just take the top off the balsamic vinegar, put our thumb on the top of it because I don't want it pouring out. And we're just sprinkling a little bit of balsamic vinegar into the salad. And again, we're going to stir the salad over to make sure that that vinegar gets mixed with all the other ingredients. Right, absolutely delicious. All that colour. Better than vegetables on a stick. <laughs>